All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we have another snow day, and I'm not knocking snow days, but we are getting just further and further behind. So to try and help you guys and help us move along as a class here uh, so that we're met, ready for May, I'm going to give you a couple of videos. So we're dealing with externalities right now. We've talked about them a little bit. I want to look at the graphs because the graphs are the things, uh, you guys seem to understand the general idea, but the graphs is where it gets a little bit trickier. So we've got a positive externality here. We've talked about a couple examples. We're going to use flu shots here, vaccines as our example. Um, if you look, I've got this graph drawn. Right now, you've seen this a million times, just a regular supply and demand graph uh, <clears throat> with an equilibrium and a price and quantity. That's how this all starts out. We have buyers and sellers represented by our supply and demand curves that buy and sell flu shots. Now, the thing with the flu shot, though, is that there's something extra here. So if we think about our supply curve as our cost curve here, which is what we've been doing, and our demand curve is our benefit curve. Uh, a positive externality like flu shots has an extra one of these two things. Well, it happens to be an extra benefit. How the heck can this happen? Well, think about it for a second. If Mr. Sutton goes to get a flu shot, I pay a cost. I pay my dollars to get the flu shot. I pay in my time and my energies to go to the health clinic, and I get my flu shot. I also get the benefit. Hopefully, I don't get sick, or at least I'm less likely to get sick. But you, you little punk at home who didn't go home, go to the health clinic and get your flu shot, you stand to benefit from my efforts. How? Well, if I don't get sick and your classmate next to you who got the flu shot doesn't get sick, then you won't get sick. And that's good for you. So there's what we call an added benefit. So if you look here, <clears throat> right now I've got, this is a private market where buyers and sellers are, are at work. But we have an added benefit. You, little punk who didn't go down and get your flu shot, you're going to benefit even though you didn't buy or sell a flu shot. So we're going to have an extra benefit here. This demand curve is going to move up. So we get this. <clears throat> and I'm going to label it in a second, but if you see, this right now is MPB, marginal private benefit. I got them notated down here for you. Uh, but this is going to be not the marginal private benefit, but the marginal social benefit. Because now we're thinking about the benefits for everybody. Mr. Sutton, kid that didn't get his flu shot, kids that did get their flu shots, and we get an extra benefit. You notice we get a new equilibrium point with a new price and a new quantity. You notice that we should, should uh, have a higher quantity. We should be making more flu shots. Uh, which makes sense because there's more benefits that we're not really thinking about in that private market. So what I want you to see here is I've got four notations, but I only have three curves. Well, <clears throat> we have an extra benefit. We talked about that. But what about our cost? You, little punk, I'm talking to you, that didn't go get your flu shot. Did you pay any cost? Did you pay for a flu shot? Did you get up in, er in the morning and go down to the health clinic? Did you... Uh, have to take the MTA. No, you did none of those things. You paid no cost. So you notice here, your private cost is really just going to be your social cost. And that's how we notate on the AP test for the most part, and I think in your book too. Um, <clears throat> so a couple things to point out here. I want you to take a break for a second from this graph because for whatever reason, kids have a hard time when they're asked to do this next part. So I just got a graph here. This is just a, a marginal social benefit curve, a demand curve. And if, I hope you can see this. Uh, if I say at the quantity of 5, what's my marginal social benefits value? You just go up to the curve, you come over, you say, oh, 10. Well, now I'm down, and I have a quantity that's increased. I'm at 10. What's my marginal social benefit value? Take a guess. 5. Sure. Anything as long as it's below 10. Well, what they've been known to do on the AP test is ask that type of question, but on this graph. And it screws kids up because they don't know where to look. So, a couple things. <clears throat> let's look. Let's call these, let's give these two points a name here. Uh, <clears throat> the AB test will call this the free market quantity or free market equilibrium. Uh, so, this is just buyers and sellers, private buyers and sellers of your flu shots. Boom. If they say, hey, what's the free market uh, value at the free market quantity? What is the value of your marginal social benefit? Here's what you got to do. You gotta find your marginal social benefit. There it is. Okay? Boom. 
Don't lose it. I'm going to put my finger on it. What's the free market quantity? 100. Don't lose it. I got my finger on it. Now you got to see, you take your 100 straight up, hit your marginal social benefit curve, 20. Well, think about it now. We're supposed to produce more of a positive externality. Why? At the free market quantity, the cost are 10, but the social benefit's 20. If the benefit's greater than the cost, you should produce more. Uh, so, give you one to think about here. Uh, if this is what we'll call our socially optimal, that's our socially optimal uh, level of production, our equilibrium. I'll give you extra credit if you can tell me what the marginal private benefit is at uh, the socially optimal level of output. Think about it. Uh, you can text me or email me. Uh, but that's positive externality in a nutshell. Thanks, guys.